One. And we are back and we are joined by Chris from Cyberfile. Hello. Hello. Organization we've been raising money for throughout this whole stream. So it would be great to know what it is if people have been wondering. So uh, maybe you can give us some, uh, some more information. And should I yeah. read the donations before or after that? Jen? After, sure. Yeah. Okay. Read after. Yeah, so maybe just a, a little bit of background. Um, Silas Marble was founded in 2010. So we've been doing you know eight years of work now helping uh, people affected by harassment and abuse online. Um, that can be in any sort of situation. So a, a social situation on social media or in the gaming world as well, um, as we've started to notice a lot more negativity um, in that section. Um, so we work to promote a more inclusive and, and safer internet environment for every internet user because everyone should be able to go on the internet and not feel uh, any fear at all or, or have any negativity posed on them. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of outreach that we do in terms of, um, you know, with businesses um, and on a one-to-one -one basis as well. Um, so we, we're really thankful for you guys doing what you're doing today and your continued support through Miss Clit. Um, and, you know, uh, what, we, what we're doing essentially is, is trying to get people to feel more confident and get more companies to embrace uh, the internet and make it a safer place for everyone. And do you have examples of what you guys do with the money that people donate to CyberSmart? Yeah, um, just a couple of examples. Um, so just going off so what you might have spare in just on you, in, on your person. Um, Three dollars will allow CyberSmile to give one-to-one -one support to a victim of cyberbullying uh, or online abuse. Um, this is through our service called the Global Support Service. Um, so someone emails help at cybersmile.org. Um, and that sends them directly to uh, a trained advisor that is basically been specially picked for their situation. Um, and they'll give them prolonged, um, you know, support until they feel comfortable, you know, with their situation, whether that may be that they are scared to start online gaming because, you know, they're not, they've heard all these bad things like, oh, people have been trolling online or, you know, they've been, you know, sort of took away um, and, you know, they hear about all the negativity. And sometimes people, you know, we get a lot of people that say, um, you know, I've, I've heard this off my friends or my family, my co-workers. Um, I don't really want to step into that yet if I'm not completely confident. Um, so also ten dollars will let Silas Mal uh, give long-term support and guidance to the victim as well uh, another good merit of the global support service as well is um, most of our trained advisors normally actually come through from the other side so they will um, obviously initially would have emailed us at help at cybersmile.org and um, you know, had their one-to-one -one sessions with their trained counsellor and then ended up actually being trained by CyberSmile. So it's, it's not people that, you know, um, are completely unaware. They know how the other person might feel. And um, I think sometimes you need that personal experience to know um, and how to deal with it. Um, you know, we've got a great bunch of people um, and they work tirelessly to to help everyone that they can. Thank you. Thank you for telling us more about it. And I know you guys also work with uh, many businesses. So if you guys work in the business and they have some questions about how they could do better measures to prevent cyberbullying or any type of disruptive behavior, uh, feel free to reach out to CyberSmile. Uh, they have some really good ideas on how to, uh, to prevent toxicity. So, uh, yeah, brilliant, thank you, yeah. You'd like for to share. people for people who are watching, you're saying they can just um if they need help, is emailing help at cybersmile dot com a, a place they could go? Yeah. Any time cool. that you feel like it. Um you just email and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. 
Um, and, you know, if obviously going back to if any companies want to help as well, there's a separate email for that. That's info at cybersmile.org. Um, you know, but you know, what we try to do is make sure that everyone is, is not got any fear in terms of the internet. Um, and that's how we're really stapling the global support service. Um, cause we're seeing it as a, as a real positive and we want to try and spread positivity as everyone knows. Um, and I think the great thing about CyberSmile is it's one of the biggest worldwide uh, support. Like it's not restricted to like local people or just the US or just the UK. Like it's pretty oh, no, yeah. global. And I think that's actually pretty great. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. You know, we consider, you know, CyberSmile as, as one of the leading um, organizations and nonprofits to to be leading the charge, if you like. Um, they're, they're trying to set a sort of a staple to other, other businesses, companies, um, and also covering the whole globe, like you say. Thank you. Thank you. That's so awesome, thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you for your support. you wanna <laughs> um, We're just gonna, uh, Silas so I'll just personally thank everyone for their support, uh, Miss Clicks. Um, have with their continued support. Um, it's a shame, obviously, this is the grand finale, if you like it. But um, you know, I'm sure you both will still be involved one way or another. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you for everyone donating. <laughs> it really helped. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have thank a you. Nice <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> awesome. So we should read the donations and then get back to the D&D &D action. Yes. Let's do that. So thank you to everyone who has donated to CyberSmile. Um, right now, it looks like we're sitting at $4,453.39, which is awesome. We're doing um, it. <laughs> since we last spoke, we received $20 from McTacky, who says hashtag Dolphineal. Thank you so much. $20 from Jesse Lynn 83, who says, thanks for everything and best of luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you. Um, we got $15 from Dave Luer. And I believe this is Nolan uh, of Roll20 fame, if I'm not mistaken. But Nolan donated $150 and said, much love to this whole crew. Appreciated watching you all level up alongside Roll20. Excited to see what's next for y'all. Thank you so much, Nolan. That's awesome. Huge donation. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Roll20 for constantly supporting us too. Roll20 was um, the first sponsor we ever had, I think. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, are we ready to get back into game? Let's do it. Okay. So you find yourselves uh, sucked into these lava tubes and kind of pulled in all sorts of different directions, tumbling through tubes as the, the water pulls you in. Eventually, uh, you each come to rest in a separate tube. The, the water seems to have drained from somewhere, and you look about and find yourself in a very dark area with none of your friends around you. Each of you is cut off and alone. Are all alone? Am I not with Bo? Nope, nope. In the, the oh. pulling of the water, and everyone just got sucked into different lava tubes in this deep underground complex. Bo, no! <laughs> uh, as you say that, actually, Bo and December, you both hear uh, Vivian say, Bo, no, even though you can't see her. Even though she's not near you, you can still hear her. How, how far does it sound like? Like it sounds it, like it's right next to you. Oh, okay. So I start. I'm, I'm, what's on the water, right? Uh, no, you're. Um, it's dry here. The water's drained out. You're just in an underground tube. Okay, so I start. Um, I don't have a cane. You have a cane. Damn it. Uh, I start like with my hands, like kind of following the voice. You just you find rocks, all around you. Hmm. No voice. I reply. Baby, I hear you. 
And you all hear that as well, but she's not near you. He's not near you anywhere. I start like clanging my cane around. The clang, the cane sound doesn't reach the other people. Uh, and you just bump does, it into rocks. Does the cane sound for me? Yeah, you hear the cane sound, but the others don't. Hmm. December doesn't even call oh, out. She just starts. <laughs> December just starts trying to move. <laughs> Go ahead. I said, follow the sound of the cane. <laughs> December is just trying to follow the sound. She doesn't even start calling out. She just gets to business about like trying to get out. Uh, I mean, the sound sounds like it's right next to you and you turn and there's no one there and you, they say something again and it sounds like it's right next to you and you turn and they're, it's just, you hear it, but they're not here. And it's not really, it's not like it's coming from down the tube. It's like it's right next to you. I find this tube very discombobulating. Are you invisible? Oh, I can hear December. Hmm. Um, I tried, uh... I try, I put my shield against the wall and I kind of push as far as, as much as I can. Uh, I mean, it's like you're pushing against solid rock. It doesn't give in the slightest. Hmm. When I, I use my sword and I like knock it to see if it's like deep. Yeah, it's super solid. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I like, I continue knocking around to see if there's like a, like a section that's like mm -hmm. tender. Uh, there comes a, a cackling voice from the darkness. <laughs> now it's just the three of you. Your mermaid friends are gone. You may have taken the old lady, but she was the least delicious of the three. Now that I have you to myself, I will rip you apart piece by piece. Separated without your friends, you'll be easy to pick off. Have we ever heard that voice before? It sounds a lot like that shadowy voice, you know, when it wasn't speaking through the horse. Um, when it was just the, the shadow. Oh, I missed that part, right? I didn't have uh -huh. sound? Okay. You might have, yeah, you might have missed that part. Yeah. So I take out my, uh, my combat shovel because I expect the person to be in close range and mm -hmm. not use my bow and arrow. Makes sense. Don't get too close! I am armed! Maybe I can dig my way out. Multi-purpose. <laughs> when it understands. Uh, well, it's solid rock below you, but the tube does extend forward and backward. Oh. You know, it's I, not I, like you're in a, just a pod. There's, it's a tunnel. Ah. Oh. Yeah. I start walking forward. All right. Uh, you begin trekking forward. What are the rest of you doing? Um, Vivi, what are you doing? Did she say something or she just started walking away? She just started walking. She started walking. Um, so I don't know if she's walking. Okay, so I, while I'm doing like clack, 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 I assume I'm turning around, I find the hole, like a part that's like, I can move mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I tell the girls, I go, okay, I'm going to start walking and I'll keep talking and you See if my voice like goes further and then I start walking and I'm just like, what about here? What about here? What about here? And I just keep saying that. It doesn't uh, change. You know, it sounds like it she's sounds right next the to same. you. Oh, that's creepy. That's something magical, guys. It's the psychic field I've been projecting to speak with you from a great distance. Side effect is it binds your thoughts together as well as mine. But I hear each and every word you say. I don't like that. Could you please stop? It's very Only important. if you give up your friends so I Why? may feast upon them. No, thank you. Well. Friends are for feasting with, not on. That's something I learned. That's not something all of you believe. I could have sworn I overheard one of you saying that you don't need friends. Yeah, I have no friends, but I still don't want you to heat her. That's not good. Wait. I don't think it's legal. 
We won't eat Vivian or December, but the ones you think of as Little Jimmy and Guy Claypool, they're tasty morsels. You don't need them, do you, Bo? Yeah, but that's not good. It's not bad. You eat yeah. a horse, and I will eat them. Yes, but horse is not smart like humans or tiefling. Horse is not smart like humans or tiefling, yes. Horse meant to be eaten or ridden. Mm. <laughs> uh, and I think it's at this point since you, who was the first one to walk down? Jen, you were, right? V Vivian, yeah. you were the first one to start walking. Um, can you give me a perception check? Mm-hmm. So I start? Just Vivian for now, please. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. My perception is terrible. It's not so good. I'm getting old, okay? Uh, that's a good excuse. 24. So you notice, just at the last minute, that one of the, you know, the rocky sections above you that's kind of pointy shifts. And it shifts just a moment before it begins to drop and fall on you. Um, so you are not surprised as one of these things falls from the ceiling and lands right next to you, like a full, you know, two foot stalactite just plummets next to you. Uh, had that hit you, it probably would have ripped you open and shatters on the ground. Danger! Danger! What? Beware of the ceiling things, they drop. I look at the ceiling. Do I, is it dark? Uh, no. Somehow it's it's lit around you. Um, and you notice that you, those bracelets the mermaids gave you are shedding a soft light, just enough for you to see your immediate surroundings. Okay. Um, but when you look up, sure enough, there are stalagmites on the ceiling, and they're moving very slowly. Hmm. Are they moving to a target, or just moving... Like, are they all moving in the same direction? Yeah, they're they... moving down the hall in your direction. I'm going to keep walking in the opposite direction as they're moving. Oh, you walk away from them. Ah. Uh, if I understand, it's like a tunnel. Uh-huh. And they're moving, like, towards this, but mm -hmm. I'm not walking, like... Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, so I see what you said. You're moving in the opposite direction that they are moving. So you're moving, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm it. going to, <laughs> to go where they're coming from. Basically. Right, got you. And I keep looking at the top to see if like... Oh yeah, as you walk under one, it releases from the ceiling and falls towards you. Uh, what sort of armor do you wear? I have no idea, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, what are the choices? What uh, you're a paladin, right? So you've probably got some sort of like heavy armor on or light armor. Uh, probably heavy. Wow. Uh, so that means a 14 to hit will like clatter off of your your plate, your half plate with a uh, chain limbs, uh, breaking on you, or at least the tip does, and toppling to the ground. And as it falls, you notice that the backside of it is like a living, sticky creature, like a, a mussel or a clam or, or something like that. Wow, so they're voluntarily dropping them. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So as I'm moving forward and progressing, I'm trying to like... So pretty much I'm like walking and as soon as I'm about to go underneath another one, I try to like accelerate, I guess, and I put my shield on my head. Nice. So with your shield and you're kind of like jumping between them, you can easily make it down. Some of them will fall and like hit your shield and slide off, um, but you can power through very quickly. December, uh, on the other hand, you don't have anything in the way of a, a shield or a cover for your head. What I you also do? am not moving. Okay. Because December, is having an existential crisis mm -hmm. because she was doing so well and she had a feast with her friends and you know she was starting to feel like maybe life made sense with love and connection and then all of a sudden circumstances beyond her control thrust her into just being alone and life is so unfair and she just doesn't understand how anyone processes all of this so she's sitting cross-legged on the floor and crying so in Aww. your guys' ears, you just hear, bleh, 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 
I'm just only good at killing people and none of this makes any sense. Go, go, go try December. Beware of the falling thingy. Don't don't get hurt. Uh, yeah, that's when one of those falling thingies falls right on top of December. Uh, and that's actually what happens. hits her. When it rains, it pours. So mm -hmm. like tights. One of these uh, stalactite little creatures falls and just plunges itself into your leg for five points of damage. Uh, you have 22 HP and you take five damage. I have 24. Here. 24? I'm so sorry. That's what it says on my character sheet. And there you go. Also, by the way, my character sheet, I believe this was the last one that I used. And it says you have 24 HP and 34 wounds. <laughs> <laughs> that was when that, that was the got. last we updated this sheet <laughs> that's when you got eaten by a shark yeah good times good times um, yeah for you i tell <laughs> anyway. i hear december's uh, weeping weep, oh, crying mm -hmm. and i say um december you might not be my friend but i don't want you to die and then i say wake up shake yourself up you got to Let's let's go through this together. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> December is is moved by at least somebody caring if she dies, and so as blood gushes from her leg, she goes into assassin mode and uh, asks, "Where should I go?" I'm going towards the moving slimes or whatever actually i've never December, <gasps> December does the same whatever bow oh, instructs oh well crap I, i'll let me change direction <laughs> <laughs> all right going the right way all right so everyone begins to continue forward um now vivian you also don't have a shield or heavy armor right um, I think I have armor though, because I'm a fighter. Okay, so you've got like chain mail on then. It's a long bow, so yeah, like chain mail would make sense. Okay, so a few of these piercers will drop from the ceiling onto you as well. Uh, one of them misses, one of them hits you and sticks into your shoulder for six points of damage. Ow! Damn. Out of your. Uh, why don't you roll me 5d10 for hit points right now? Sounds good. 23. All right, hits you for 6 out of 23. That was a bad roll. Yeah, uh, Steph, why don't you roll for hit points as well? You've got higher cons, so why don't you roll me 5d10 plus 5. Okay. Oh, 30. much better. Okay, cool. That's right. fine. Uh, so Vivian, you get hit by one. You keep moving forward. You notice that there's there's actually a lot of these things in this hallway. Uh, you'd spot at least four more in front of you. One like five feet out, one 20 feet out, and the other two are just kind of in the shadows at the edge of your vision. What are you doing, I don't Vivian? Do very well. <laughs> December, what about you? Uh, I'm I'm just... Probably actually like running in the direction that Bo told me to run. Just bolting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you'll get another two dropping on you, but they'll have penalties to hit because, you know, running. Harder to hit a moving target. And I'm target. very dexterous. You have very high AC because of your dexterity. Um, yeah, they all miss you. One of them gets really close. One of them like tears your jacket. Uh, as it slices behind you, but you get out without a problem. Bo's got I the think shield. I, even, I do some like parkour type stuff. Like I like run up on the wall around one. Yeah. Nice. Bo's got the heavy armor and the shield and can just walk and the things will fall on the shield and just clang to the side harmlessly. Bo is not fair. Yeah. I'm definitely being lazy and walking. Mm -hmm. uh, Vivian, you know, you're in a tough spot here. You're gonna take some more attacks from these things as they fall from the ceiling. One of them misses, the other two hit you uh, for one and five more damage as well. Oh, she's minus 12. Yeah, it's not looking so great. Um, and as you progress down these tunnels independently, each in your own region, but still able to talk, uh, 
you come across these humanoid figures, more sort of around the same time. One of you is going to see them a little before the other. Uh, and they're just kind of these slow moving, like <clears throat> wide and thick, but not super tall figures made of this uh, kind of blackish reddish mud. And <clears throat> there's one in each of your caverns as that voice echoes back. Now, now, my friends, it's time to say your goodbyes. I'll add you to friend? my dinner. I I keep walking like I never saw. I, like I see that and I keep walking. I have my shield in front and on the top, like I'm dodging back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I have my sword in my other hand. And I, like I get as close as I can. And like I'm not being sneaky at all. I'm already like ready to swing. And like as soon as I get close, I release and I try to cut him in half. All right, give me a roll to hit there. Uh, you are a fifth level paladin. Uh, so five, six, seven. So you're gonna roll at plus eight to hit and, and one D eight plus three for damage. Okay, wait. Uh, okay. So D 20 plus eight to hit. Okay. 26. Oh wow, that's great! You def you actually critically hit the creature. So roll me two d eight plus three for damage. Damn. Nice. All right. Good you, job. you hack into your mud man before you. Mud man. For thirteen. It, you cut most of the way through it. It starts to slide. The top of it slides. The bottom of it goes the other way. And then it just stops and like slowly reforms into this like awkward split apart person. Uh, and I think this is where I'm going to ask everybody to roll for initiative. Just roll a, a d20. Highest goes first. Lowest goes last. We're going to keep it simple here. And we're going to add in some battle music. Oh, I think I did mine. I got seven. Yeah. And two. Oh my god. See, it's fishes. Um, well, December goes first. Look at that. She's fast. She is. What are you going to do? So, according to my character sheet, my backstab damage is 3x my normal damage. Yes. Yes, if you so, can like get up on this creature and get behind it, definitely. That's what I'm saying is like, she's doing this parkour stuff, right? She's like running mm -hmm. up the wall and she's like dodging around. And what she's going to try to do is just like basically run up and like jump and like climb the creature and almost like put herself in a fireman carry over it and like lean over the creature's back with her dagger and just pfft, right into its back. Nice. That makes sense. You, yeah, but you're going to need to make a dexterity check to do that. That's fair. All right, 21 or higher to leap over the mud man. That's, that's enough to just get over it and make your roll to hit plus two for back attack. Um, With my dagger, it's already... Uh, 30 plus six, so it should be eight total. Twelve. That, it will stab in the mud man's back. Uh, but not really sink in too far. Mudmen, they're that thick mud, you need more to clear by. So you get your Damn dagger it. in there, it's just kind of goopy and gross, and you like pull it out, it's all sloppy it. and muddy. That was so uh, cool, and yet does nothing. Nothing. Not high enough, no. Uh, that's when the mudman, its face just kind of like moves through the mud to change sides. It doesn't even turn around, its feature is just like switch sides and it reaches out with one big hand to whap you to the side uh with a 12 to hit i don't think that's gonna uh, hit you i don't think so either let me double check where is my armor class on this uh, that's, uh, that's the crazy old sheets from way long ago uh, yeah it's not on this sheet my ac is uh, i have it written down as 16 that sounds right to me. That sounds about right. So it goes to smash you in the face with a big muddy hand and just whiffs. And oh, 15, I lied. 15, okay. Let me fix that. Um, completely missing you. The next one ah. goes against Vivian and it's going to aim a like grab right for your head and try and oh, suck you into its body. It. No, you do not beat it. Uh -huh. uh, it will roll a six to hit you, which is just, it's a slow mud man. It, it's got to wake up in the morning. It hasn't had its coffee. 
Uh, and seven comes up with who rolled a seven for initiative? Was that Vivian or was oh, that Bo? Yeah, it's Vivian. Go for it, Vivian. Uh, could I try to move past it and just keep walking in the corridor? <laughs> Uh, it's pretty tight on either side of that creature. You might be able to pull off some sort of like acrobatics getting around it, but you're going to have a hard time just walking past it. So a dex check might get you past. Hmm. I think I have good dexterity, but I, I think I'll just take a few steps back and use my longbow. Okay. Yeah. Give me a roll to hit. I'm not sure what's my modifier, though. Uh, Fire. you will have your fifth level, so four and two from dex should be plus six to hit. 23. That'll do it. You skewer the creature. Roll me 1d8 for damage. Three. <laughs> uh, it's not so good. Your arrow sticks into the mud man and just kind of like sticks in the to the mud man. Doesn't really seem to be bothering him so much. The last one will go and attacks Bo. Uh, with an actual 18 to hit. It'll smash you, Bo, with a, a big muddy fist to the side for three points of damage. Even with my shield? Even with your shield, yeah. The roll's really high. Okay. Um, how many damage is it? Three? Mm -hmm. Three, yeah. It's a big, okay. goopy, bruisy thing, and it is your turn. Okay. Um, so I still have my shield and I'm going to try to like backslash back. So like I was in my movement doing this, I hit, mm -hmm. and then I'm trying to use the shield with like, like sna slapping in with the shield. Nice. Uh, yeah. As I'm like getting ready for the other axe, like, you no, know, the axe bit. Right. So give me a shield strike. Are you hitting with like the front of the shield or like the edge of the shield? Are you like... What, what part of the shield are you hitting him with? I think that if I were to do this and then use the shield right away, I would hit, like, the side, I guess. Yeah, like using the side to just, like, crack yeah. the mud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good Viking so technique. Roll? Uh, roll me a... This is not your long sword that you're specialized with or your weapon. Um, This is a d20 plus f four is the number. Oof. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, oh. It kind of hits the mud man, and the mud just like bends around it, and then just comes off again. Okay. Um, Not all right. Back. Neil, I don't know if this is something that's quickly fixable, or if we should do it on break. But chat <gasps> says that the Ooh. donation bar is not visible. Yes, that is fixable. I don't know. Yes. Fixed. Done. Thank you. Um. All right, next, uh, we're going to the top of the initiative order again, December. Yes, December. Uh, so so the, the mud man is standing facing this way, and I'm now, like, my, I'm, my dagger is now in his chest? Yes. Because he, uh, okay. Yes. So she's going to try, she's going to try to take the dagger out and do a parkour move where she just, like, does one of those cool, like, I don't know, crazy lady villain kung fu things where she like uses her leg to spin around his neck and flip around to the other side and backstab him that way excellent that give me sense. another dexterity check as you try and ninja your way onto its back no not one <sighs> steph why don't you tell us what happens when december rolls a natural one on her parkour over the mud man me I yeah. have to say what happens? you have to decide her fate Oh my god! Neil just uh, like absconding your what's that <laughs> word? Whatever. Not taking responsibility. Uh what is so were you in front of it or at the back of it when you try to do like that? So I was like, if 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 here's the guy's shoulder and like here's his head, I was like bent over his shoulder with my dagger sticking in his chest. Okay. Um as your legs go up and you're like trying to split, that's when the dagger actually kind of slids off <laughs> and you fall like on the ground, like face first. No. <laughs> Just like, <"Pew." laughs> 
<laughs> the dagger slides right out of the Mudman. December face plants into the ground, and the Mudman goes to just crush you under its massive muddy weight, and it hits you hard uh, for six points of damage as you just feel this, like, pressure on your back, and you almost feel like your ribs starting to fracture. Oh, um, ow. Vin- Vivian, your Mudman is chasing you down, but it's a slow creature, and uh, it can't actually keep up with you. Um, oh. It moves about half your rate, so you can just sort of kite it forever if you want, uh, but it just... Lo- I, most of my friends, he's really slow. You can kite him, like in those games that the younger ones play nowadays. Uh, and it's your turn. Start walking back, but I look out in case there's some, like, you know, other spikes that could fall onto me. Uh, uh, nope, they've already all fallen and hit you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You've already so, t- I, so I hide him and I, I go for another, another sure. shot. Give uh, me a roll the hit. Six? Was that it? Was it the six? Yes, that sounds about right. Three. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen is the magic number you need to roll. Nice. Yep. And then D eight. Yep. Eight. Oh. Ah. You hit the mudman square in the the solar plexus area, and you see it actually like freezes, and half the mudman sort of like turns to to hardened mud, and the other liquid half keeps moving, and then the hardened section just breaks and shatters on the ground. And now a smaller mudman is coming after you. Huh. I mean, just as tall, but like a little bit thinner, you know, mm-hmm. half the size. I broke part of the Mudman, guys. He becomes right. smaller. It's oh. really much less intimidating, evil person. It's almost kind of silly looking. Ha! Ah. <laughs> well, ah. the badly wounded Mudman that is fighting uh, Bo, who's still not smaller, but you can see the movements are sluggish and like little bits of mud are dripping off of it as if it were like melting ice or something, aims its next attack at you, which catches right on your shield, and you find your shield is like sticking to the mud man as like, it, it's almost like suction cupping, suction cupping your shield to its body, um, but it does no damage to you, and it's your turn. Is my shield still stuck in the, in the mud? Yeah, it's like stuck on the mud man. Okay, so here's what I do. I have my shield on the mud man and I have my sword and I just like kind of push the mud man towards the wall mm-hmm. and like I'm trying to impale him with my sword. Nice. Give me a strength check to push him to the wall. Ooh, mud man does not roll very well on his strength check. Oof. That's good enough, though. Uh, you can shove it over the wall, and which kind of exposes its underside and belly, so go ahead and make your attack at plus two, because you've got it sort of pinned. Uh, plus eight, plus two, yeah. Yes. Oops. Jen's keyboard. I'm learning. Okay. Oh, perfect. You oh, get a, a... You just plunge right through it. D8 plus 3 for damage. Okay. D8 plus 3. 7! You rip it to shreds. Your sword goes through it, hits the wall behind, and the mud man just <clears throat> drips into oh, this okay. like really liquidy, watery mud that flows over the floor and kind of just stops being. My man is dead. And as, before you, you go to the next one, Neil, uh, I start like my progression right away to try to, yeah. Like I continue my progression and my goal is pretty much to find B. Like I'm starting to be scared for B. Mm-hmm, excellent. Uh, Anna, you are at the top of the initiative order. Uh, well, now laying in a disgraced pile, December will gather herself. Just like and since she's times. already on the ground, She's gonna, this time, she's really trying to get that back attack. She's gonna dive through their legs and stand up and try one more time for the backstab. All right, third time's a charm. We believe in December's dice, yeah. Oops. I think it's gonna be the good one. It's gonna be a one. Yeah, 30! All right, all right. 
right. You easily like tuck and roll and back roll between the creature's legs, and before it has a chance to flip about and face you, you can. Roll the hit. You roll dice, yeah. Ah. <laughs> I I did the plus eight. I don't know if it should have been plus six this time, but. Uh, no, plus eight is right because you're on its back okay. again. Uh, actually, no, you're right. It should have been plus six, but it doesn't matter. 13 is all you needed to do to hit it. You stab it in the back for triple damage uh, with that Itch. thief backstab with the dagger, ability. With the dagger, my damage is d4, so we're going to roll 3d4. Eight. Ooh. Yeah, your dagger rips into it, uh, and it starts to kind of like... Don't succeed, try, try again! It starts to drip water or drip like dirty water off of it as it diminishes in size. And this time, instead of like flipping to face you, the head just like rotates like a like an owl's head. Um, and it like hits backwards with its arms to hit you. What the hell? That's uh, not. Yeah. And it hits you again, December. Uh, this no. time only for two damage, but it sends you reeling as it like smashes its arms backwards and like hits you from either side and you tumble and roll. The next one comes after you, Vivian. No. And it doesn't get to you. Because it's a slow mud man. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Very slow and small. <laughs> part of me really wants to go hit him with my combat shovel, but the bigger part of me thinks it's really unwise to do so. Oh, but Vivian turn. doesn't care. Vivian goes for it. <laughs> so how much do I roll for a hit with the combat shovel? So I'm trying to make him even smaller by like removing parts of his body with the shovel. Considering right. mud, it sounds really appropriate. Well, I guess against a mud man, a combat shovel would do D8 hit points of damage, but against anything else, it would do D4. Uh, okay. Go ahead and make your attack at D20 plus five. Yeah. Oh, that's a critical hit. Roll me 2d8 damage as you just scoop the out. <laughs> you just scoop out the heart of the mud man and fling it down the hall. The whole thing collapses and... <laughs> there has never been a more appropriate use of a combat shovel yeah. ever. And then I scream out, Oh, I told you it would work. I killed him with the combat shovel. <laughs> All your silly weapons. <laughs> um, all right. It is Bo's turn, and you are just racing down this hall, right? Yeah. Looking for V and for for uh, December here. Yeah. Uh, you will get... Okay. You'll get somewhere. We'll, we'll, we'll... Your next round is when you'll get where you need to go. Um, yeah. So we go to the top of the initiative order again. December. Uh, if the the thing's head only turned around, so technically I'm still at its back. <laughs> I suppose I did describe it, so you were still facing its back, yes? Uh, yep. Well played. So, no dex check needed. I'm just gonna con I'm just gonna again like take it out and stab again. Clever, clever. That's me. Neil. You've mm. made me this way. 25. Uh, well, you clear by 10, so you definitely critical the creature. Uh, go ahead so and... That... Yes. Yes, it is. That's twice my damage, right? Yes. So twice, three times my damage, so 64. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh my gosh. Look how many ones I rolled. Oh. That's all right. It had nine hit points left, so you've, you've done the job. Uh, you oh, find the the core of this creature that powers it, which unbeknownst to you is actually a, a small gem inside of its chest. And you just find that exact spot and shatter the gem and the whole creature collapses into a, a pile of muddy water. Neil, uh, nobody else can see this, but you see December look right at you through the fourth wall and give you a meaningful smile. And then she goes back to work. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bo, you're the first one down the hallway running when you see, you kind of come around this bend and there's this kind of shadowy figure. It almost looks like, um, 
You know, if you just like put a bunch of food dye in water and it's kind of this like weird murky thingy, it looks like that with like little bits of color just sort of draining off onto the sides. But instead of like a blue or red color, it's black. So it's this like black, murky, watery, thingy, shadowy thingy standing before you. It's vaguely got two appendages that you could consider arms, but they ebb and flow and appear and disappear. Uh, and it says to you as you come around the corner, why are you trying so hard to save little Jimmy? You don't care for him. You don't care for anyone. You're heartless, as heartless as I am. I don't even like, I'm unfazed. I pretend like I did not even see. I keep looking around and I'm like just observing the the, the room and mm -hmm. like where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I should mention that the other two of you hear it say that as well, but you can tell it's directed at. Um, Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I just say to the girls, like, I think the shadow is here, but I don't see you guys. And I keep, like, looking around and trying to figure out, like, the room layout. Uh, I think, did you hear what it said? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> and I just, like, completely ignore him. Well, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Shadow, he's hard of hearing sometimes. <laughs> I keep forgetting that you guys are, like, 75 years old. <laughs> um, I'm deaf, like a little part deaf in my yeah. in my position, and I'm like, like I, half of me is pretending not hearing him, and the other half is actually me not really hearing him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're still in a tunnel. The tunnel's curving, but there's it's still just like a one direction path here. Yeah. Uh, and what are, what are Vivian and December doing? Mm, I think I keep walking. December? Same direction. December, what are you doing as well? Sorry, I just lost sound, but I got it back. Um, I'm going to now get up and continue running the direction I was before okay. the Mudman got in my way. So we've got Bo, who's the furthest forward, December, who's running after Bo, and Vivian, who like retreated for a few rounds to, to kite the monster and is now starting to catch up. So. Uh, we're gonna take our next break right here, and when we come back, we're gonna see what happens with this shadow monster. See you guys on the other side of a break. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>